Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. I love you. I love you. We could say that on this channel, can't we? Right? And it's not even weird. I mean, look, I've said it to, I've said it to partners on RPG Limit Break. What do I care? I'm aware. I'm so, I'm such a disaster. <laughs> uh, how's everyone doing this morning? The final morning. Well, I guess technically it's a minute afternoon, so. I mean, what if you're not on the East Coast, love? What if there's like people in the rest of the world? It could be like, it could be like 9 a.m. for somebody who's in California. Yeah, it could be 5 p.m. Ah, so what you're saying is I should go get the gold schlock. Got it. Cool. Hell All yeah. right, let's, let's do this thing. <laughs> also, but yeah, I, no. I couldn't start the timer if I wasn't here. Hi, everybody. It's Natara for 30 seconds. Hi, it's Natara. Natara is wonderful and a friend. No, you. No, you. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Uh, well, mostly at this you. point, I'm just stalling for time because this game is Reseteer. Um, it's really adorable, and it has a really adorable opening cutscene that I'm waiting for it to start autoplaying. It's so good. I've watched <laughs> it over and over for the last little bit. It's real good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you'll notice that I've got a uh, three-hour estimate for this. Um, my PV for this category, as I get my splits up, because I'm definitely prepared. What are you talking about? Is... She's been playing Arceus all morning. Don't let her. Don't let her fool you. That's also true. I mean, uh, my PB. My PB is an hour and a half. My sum of bests is fifty-five minutes. We will be lucky today, friends, if I finish a run. Oh, hey. here's the opening. I'm going to be quiet now. Uh, Chad is saying they don't hear game audio. Yeah, I see why. There now. So that's the opening cutscene. It introduces us to all of the characters, most of which we will never see or talk to at all in the speedrun. Estelle, I can't wait until we do all that wonderful combat that the uh, the opening cutscene was showing us, too. I really hope that we do get to fight the King Slime in this run. Please hug Slime! I don't even know how to get to the Slime. It's been forever since I've played this not in the speedrun. Wait, you're telling, you're, wait, you're telling me we're not going to fight anything? But Correct. What about, but what about what about tiny fairies bloodlust? But what about capitalism? Oh fuck no, that's even worse. Excuse me, I used a bad word. I got my bad word out of the way, everybody. I apologize. Ooh, I'm telling. <laughs> tisk tisk. <laughs> anyway, um, with that out of the way, um, all. <laughs> Demi, you know how the you know how this game works. You know what the route is. I know what the route is. We're going to open a shop and we're going to sell stuff for hopefully about 75 minutes. <laughs> so we're going to get started. Um... <laughs> uh, and we'll see how far we can get before things start imploding on me. Woo! 
So we'll get started in three, two, one, go. I was around for the last successful run of this, by the way. It's been a long time since you've run this, let alone successfully. Yep. So how much did you practice for this run? Zero. It doesn't help. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, this is very much menuing the game. Um, the goal here is to buy some things that will sell pretty darn well. Because... Uh, it is important that... Part of why the run fails, basically, is that... Um, in your first playthrough of Reseteer, you are not expected to succeed. You are expected to fail. <laughs> Um, basically what happened is that you own this shop and you have your family's debt. You can kind of see when, like, he pulled up the calendar there that, that you need to pay off 10,000 currency, uh, by, you know, next week. Hey, loan sharks are the worst. Capitalism sucks. Um, but yeah. So as you can see, we're going to sell stuff for more than its base price. And depending upon which people there are. Um, they'll buy things for different amounts, and there's a combo meter because we need to get merchant level to get access to better items. So we need to successfully sell things as much as possible. Um, the combo is like the most important thing, honestly. If your merchant level doesn't get high enough, you cannot get enough stuff to sell, and then you will uh, basically go broke. Um, and yeah, our goal is to about hit uh, one merchant level per day for the first couple of days. Yep. If we do not, if we do not make it, uh, things get really sketchy really fast, uh, because the time limits are pretty, they are pretty rough. But the idea is that, um, normally what happens is that normally you're not supposed to be able to pay off your debt, and when you fail to pay off your debt, basically it's a time loop, right? You go into loop two, loop three, and whatnot. Um, we ain't got time for that. Because you start from scratch, it's pretty terrible. Um, the whole idea here is that we want to make sure that we are making that money, honey, because we gotta get paid. And we gotta do it in a hurry, so... Cool, this is actually really good. Like, that was basically optimals, optimal days one and two. Yeah, we've got like three grand in the bank, right? We've, we've made some money, we've profited, um, everyone's super happy. Uh, we're well on our way to paying off our first shop debt. Right, stuff will get back into stock every so often, but now that it's not in stock, um, you tend to be a little bit selective about what you want because, you know, part of it is that selling more things is good, but we just want to sell more expensive things because the percentage res on it is just better. Um, especially because people are not guaranteed to come in here and buy everything. So the whole idea here is that, you know, you want to balance having the right amount of items in the early game with the odds that people will buy them. Your daughter wanted a warrior helmet. I respect her. She seems good. Uh, thankfully that's the first sale of the day, so that might not ruin, ruin everything. But, uh, all these NPCs also get happier and sadder depending upon how much you sell them stuff for. Um... So it can be problematic to either rip people off or just sell them sell them stuff for just a little bit more right now because then you'll get less later. So you have to be a little careful about that. Yeah, plus each character has in the back of their head like the amount that something is worth. Yep. Um and you'll notice down at the bottom the just combo is the combo meter, but there's also a pin and a near pin that are worth bonus points, and those are for, like, really nailing how much they think something's worth. There is a little bit of random factor in that as well, so... The idea is that that's a little less important. It doesn't add much more experience, uh, but stringing it together is really what you're here to do. Um, yeah. Like, if you can nail it, especially early on, the boost is really useful. Because, like, hitting it perfectly is worth uh, 30 XP. Yeah, but that's, like, super narrow range, so... Um, Alright, well, we reach rank 2. Which now means... We'll get more events and a little bit more money. And 
now we're gonna go get a variety of things because people don't just want equipment. They want books and food and things. So we need to have a ton of stuff on hand. Yeah, especially because at this point, we mostly care about the combo. And if a little girl comes in and wants a book, then we'd better have that book, otherwise that breaks our combo. Yep. Part of what ends up happening is is that uh, people will show up and ask for specific items, whether or not you have them on the shelves. They will tell you, hey, can you go look in the back or something? Um, you know, because that's what consumers do, because the customer is always wrong. I just want I just want to say that if you've never worked retail before, you will not appreciate this game. <laughs> Why can't why can't you sell me this firearm that you have in the back? I don't have a firearm in the back. Go away. Can you sell me a beer? No, you're seven. Please leave. <laughs> you worked at a McDonald's. That totally counts. Um, <laughs> I am telling you, the computer is telling me I don't have it in stock. Tyr has told me we do not have any we do not have any ancient history books from Greece. <laughs> Please go away. Also, sometimes people will show up and want to sell you things, so it is important that you also have some money on hand at points as well. Um, also, Leggy has to make sure that she's paying attention that uh, people are going to be uh, uh, selling her stuff and not buying stuff. Like, for example, this candy apple. We don't want to buy it for 1600 that's expensive. And you can see that the Jersey combo is now 128. Like, the whole idea of this day is you get a whole ton of items and we are going to try and run this up. Um, yeah, that's yep. why we really fill up the store here. Yep, so now you run it up and now you make it all the way to merchant level 4. So this is going swimmingly, actually. Yeah. Uh, we'll open up again. Like, we got a couple of high-ticket items here, which are going to be kind of nice, because you can see that we bought them for, like, 50% of base value, and we'll sell them for, like, 125. Does it count as a commentator's curse if I'm already expecting the game to go off the rails the moment we get out of the early game? Oh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> this is this is going swimmingly, but the game gets real bad later, potentially. Uh... Like, a lot of it comes down to luck and hitting a couple of those random cell numbers that uh, are very, very necessary. Um, some food. See, he wants some food. And now you have to decide, though, because you have to determine whether this person can afford the good food or if you just want to safely sell him an apple. Um, you get to feel get to feel for who's actually, like, who's got the money and who doesn't. And also, as you get more friendly with people, uh, they will have more money to spend in your shop. Yeah, they'll shell out because they like you. Let's actually we've got the money for it. Are we are we is it is it be full time? Oh yeah. I should have bought one more apple. My bad. It's fine. Okay. いくらにしようかな。ありがとうございます。売れたよ。いらっしゃいませ。いくらにしようかな。うん。ありがとうございます。買い取ったよ。こんにちは。いくらにしようかな。ありがとうございます。売れたよ。Little girl wants an apple. Note that, note that you only get about 110% for that because little girls also don't bring a lot of money to the shop. Um, yeah, they don't understand what a haggling is. This, my grandmother really tre treasured this baked potato. <laughs> yeah. No, like, some of the dialogue gets really silly when you stop and think about what the item they're actually buying is. I mean, look, it's delicious. But yeah, we're really trying to focus on the young guy and the guildmaster because the, gu the guildmaster has 
the guild master gets heckin money at the end game if you keep him happy. Oh, yeah. Like the guild master obviously runs the show and he is <laughs> No. Hey, no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, terrible. Uh, But yeah, if we want to pass time, the easiest way is to just peace out to the guild and then walk back. Which takes up one of the four time slots for the day. Yep. Stocking up takes time. I need three. But it, yeah, as you can see, we're we are doing capitalism. We are making money. We are making money. You know, this is the the literal the the apples are the little the literal fruits of our labor. And by labor, I mean we sit behind this counter. Uh, but at least we do get the value of our labor because we uh we actually kind of own the shop, excepting the fact that evil capitalist banks actually own the own the shop. I just, I do, I do tend to object to how the fairies are represented in this because they're all represented as terrible, as terrible capitalists in this game. And what weird world would you end up with capitalist fairies anyway? I don't even want to think about that now. Chris fault for, not, for being non-specific in her wish. Well, yeah. We have a weapon. Yeah, you can have the sword. <sighs> I love the combo meter. It just makes me feel really happy to see number go up. Number go up. Everybody loves number go up. <laughs> this world's entire economy is based around a magical, ever-changing dungeon full of regenerating treasure. Yes, and we could befriend the adventurers and go into that dungeon in a casual playthrough. Otherwise, we're just trying to make that number in the top left go up. That's the only one that matters. And it needs to get to 10,000 in, uh, two days. We got time. We got time. Plenty of time. Even with everything going pretty much according to plan early on, if people don't, like, buy those yams in the next day or so, we're in so much trouble. <laughs> Uh, it is possible just to, it is possible just to miss a checkpoint, not because you're doing anything wrong, it's just because bad luck. Or people sell you some, something at the wrong time and you are just out of cash when the debt collector comes knocking. Ah, frick. I think that's fine. Goodness. Oh, this is bad. Oh, it's bad, yeah. Beef bowl would have been safer there, but... Uh... Yeah, now we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Now, now yeah, things are kind of bad. There was an argument to be made that maybe you pass that up, but it's real hard to pass that up. Yeah, my combo was already broken, so I could have just... Just give it up. It. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, we got two days. Oh, I do need the experience. Yeah. You didn't make money, but you've got a whole ton of stock now. Let's open it up early. I have food. Okay. 
that helps. But yeah, a certain amount of this game is just optimizing moving through the price menus. Yep. This is why we buy the book. Oh, because did little girl come come looking for the book finally? Yep. Unbelievable. Even even ready for a little girl to buy a book from you. Okay, we are level 7 at this point, so, you know, we're doing good on level. Yeah, level is not the issue. You just need to bring in 4 grand. <sighs> like, you want... Like, thankfully, this is the first sale of the day, so again, the combo is not up yet, so it's irrelevant. I mean, okay, well, it is relevant. It, it does not... You do not get the starting combo two points, and you don't start your combo. Yeah. The lack of combo starting is... A nuisance. But if you're going to screw up at any time... Early is correct. You sure can. Please buy my apple. Okay. Uh, armor on 10? It's fine. It doesn't need to be expensive armor. Either. It just needs to be armor. I mean, we're going to get expensive armor because it's the Guildmaster, but... Yep. Um, also, we do need to make sure that we stay above 10k here for safety. I do have some backup stock of things if things implode. But yeah. Yeah, kind of area housewife does bring up that there is an entire dungeon crawling section. You can hire adventurers, and they all fight differently, and you can do all of that. Um, and the game loops, so if you fail to pay off your debt, technically you go back to the start of the game, but with all the experience and such you have, so uh, you can, you know, cultivate your experience with adventurers and things. Uh, we don't do. We're again, as a reminder. We're not doing any of that. Okay. We're actually doing really good right now for this early segment. Is the money feeling cut pretty cozy at this point? Yeah. Got a hat. Do you need to get some bracelets? Yeah, because you're gonna need a couple for the uh, guild master as well. But that could wait till day nine, honestly. Yeah. Like one of the big things that uh, we all forget in this run is, of course, whenever we have a whenever we have a required thing that we're trying to do, i.e., like sell somebody armor, or I'll show up in three days and buy four swords from you or something. Some legendary hero named Link shows up looking for four swords. I don't know why. He's only he's only one adventurer. Okay. 
I keep trying to lowball the young guy. Uh, cause I really want to hit a pit price. Because I need his friendship to level up with me so that I have a- I can actually expand his wallet. Cause I need to get more money from him. Right. Because we need to capitalism him better. <laughs> Resources. Incredibly out of resources. I mean, Stella and I have been playing, you know, Pokemon Legends Arceus, a game where that you, a game where you can Bethesda up walls. And it's really funny because it works because, like, literally, if you if you use that term to describe anything to anybody, they know exactly what you mean. The debt collector has shown up, and they're taking your money. They suck. Correct. Ah, I see. I see. People in chat have not played Morrowind. <laughs> Um, or, or Fallout 3, or... Skyrim. Or Skyrim. <gasps> but yes, you have the ability to, uh... To, uh, walls are somewhat suggestions in so much that if that you run into them at the right angle, you can climb up them. Um... So the running gag is that, you know, bethesda up a wall is climbing a wall in a manner which is unintended by using things like the terrain to your advantage. I mean, that's not really what it's called. It's called, you know, exploiting terrain is if you want to be technical about it, but you need to have a funny name for things, right? Like... Like, who wants their trick to be called wall clip glitch when you can call it something silly? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I need food. Yes, RBW, you can Bethesda anything. It's okay. Like, like, feel free to Bethesda that door. Or that house. Or that mountain. Right, if you play your cards right, you could possibly even Bethesda that that poor angry death claw that is going to try to kill you. <laughs> Bethesda already Oh right, that's Skyrim. Shoot. <laughs> Here, get out of here. Here, I need you to move. Tear, tear please stop being terrible. For like five seconds. Best I got. So literally all the money I have. At least he agreed on the second go round. Yeah. But I am flat broke now. I can't believe I can't believe your uncle clipped his hand into his printer. <laughs> you should probably see a doctor for that. <laughs> If we want to get more specific, the art of Bethesda does require that you be playing a 3D game. Uh, you know, specifically with 3D terrain. <laughs> Probably not made in Blender, but, you know, if you've played Arctic Alive, it, you can say. Yeah. 
Do you have a hat? You have one hat left. I had a hat. Old man's gotta make it through the winter, I don't blame him. The <laughs> little girl cannot afford spiked armband, by the by. <gasps> yep. Although it would be metal as heck. <gasps> oh yeah. Okay. Normal dude leveled up. That's actually really good. How do you know that normal dude leveled up? Did you see the heart? I did not. It was very subtle, apparently. Yeah. yeah we only need to get one level on... Uh, our various people. Yeah, he's an important one because he's, he's cause, you know the common people show up a lot. They're the common people, right? The regular townsfolk. Guildmaster leveled up. Okay. That one's super important. So the, the, those are the friendship levels we need. Don't forget to get the Guildmaster armor for tomorrow. I already did. Why did you get the spiked armband? Because it's metal as heck. But yeah, no. Three steps ahead, love. That's a rare treat from you. That's not normal. <laughs> Here we go. Also, wow. <laughs> the price of candy has increased. Yeah, so now we get into the true part why, of why this run is an RNG nightmare. The price of goods can randomly increase or decrease. And getting those price differentials is super important. Yeah, because if you hit it on a big thing like a weapons or armor, you can make an absolute pile of money. Um, and if, it, if prices drop at the wrong time, uh, things get real bad real fast. Yeah, you get turbo. You just get destroyed in the marketplace of, well, capitalism. The marketplace of expensive ideas that are actually all terrible. Y'all yeah, have food on 12. I mean, you'll have food every day. Food is the most common thing in the game, thankfully. And the old man leveled. That's, that's less fine. important, but it's also useful. Yeah, like, that's fine. Like, like the old man and, uh, leveling up is fine. The little girl leveling up is fine. Yeah, but the nice thing about the Guildmaster and the young guy is you can charge him 125%. Super consistently without affecting later, affecting the game later. Yeah. I do. Buy this iron armor. Buy this spiked armband. My man, you are going to be so fashionable at the at the punk show tonight. The only annoying thing about that is you have to sell two items for one combo gain, which is a nuisance, but yeah, can't win all, I guess. Yeah. On the other hand, um, we've got the, you know, uh, price adjustment meter going on. And if you sell someone an item that's marked up and an item that isn't marked up at the same time, you um, as long up. as the item that's marked up is the first one, yeah. the markup will apply to the entire order. You'll get paid. It's great. But yeah, Annette, we're still just trying to grind that last bit of experience out. Because we whiffed a little earlier. And we want to get the shop to sell us better things. Yeah. Frick. Uh, that breaks the combo. We're out of hats. Yeah. 
That was a bad time to lose the combo. You needed that to be literally anything else. <laughs> yeah. To get your level 10 right now. And the problem is sometimes people will show up in your store to sell you things that have been raised in price. So you're stuck buying them for like base value usually, which is kind of bad. <laughs> You've got everybody trying to sell you candy right now, too? This is the worst. Here's Prime. We're, this is the only chance that we're going to get to meet her. She is, uh, as a fairy, is a super penny pincher. Uh, literally the worst. <laughs> oh, that was going the wrong way. Frick. I thought he was trying to buy my beef full. Oops. Uh, we got rid of the thankful statue, which is amazing. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, prices being up means you can basically charge double. Yeah, they're super popular, so you can just you can get you can get the big money for them. Little girl doesn't have a ton of ton of money though, so you can really only go about two hundred percent. But like Guildmaster goes as high as like two fifty. <laughs> Is the price of shields has decreased. The price of candy has normalized. So now is always interesting is just, do you want to decide to buy shields now and stock up or Well, it doesn't really affect the wholesale price. It affects it. Yeah, it doesn't affect the wholesale price, does it? I thought it affected it slightly. It might, but it's not enough that it's worth thinking about. Sell me your chocolate and slips it under the counter for herself for later. <laughs> But yeah, we need level 11 to actually start buying the good stuff. Yeah, hitting the combo now is like imperative. Because you need access to the better stuff fast. <laughs> yes, we will definitely have food for you, young man. <laughs> you may be getting, like, cherries, but you'll deal with it. Why, why, why must Prime want to buy our main bowl? This sucks. <laughs> like, the nice thing, though, is that 105 is basically always a uh, deer pin for, for, for fair, so yeah. it's fine. Okay, there's the level that's split. It is time. Now, we undergo the appropriate uh, transformational sideboarding. Ooh, swords are up. Oh wait, do we have wait do we have blue elemental blast in the sideboard? We are no longer a general adventure goods shop. We are now a high end weapon and armor short store. <laughs> For the rest of the game, by the way. Yes. 
like the tier three weapons and the tier three weapons are now things that you can just buy outright. There's no more stock restriction on them. Um, not that we care. We're basically going to be trying to buy whatever tier four gear that we can get our hands on here. Okay, good. No announcement. I'm actually going to put all these swords in the window. It is sorty time, isn't it? They are the popular item right now. I think I have two hats. But at this point, breaking combo doesn't matter. And here we go. Yeah, once you get to a level 11, now you get to be a little bit more selective. But in the flip side of the coin, uh... Oh, hey, you want this knife blade that is overpriced as hell? Yeah, please, give me 20k. <laughs> We just made more money in one transaction than we did in the entire first week. And now, and now it basically comes down to luck. Little girl leveled up, not that that really matters, but... Little girl, little girl can't buy high-end adventure gear. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and like, at this point... Eh, uh, sure. At this at point, this point I don't care about my merchant level, so I don't care about my combo. <laughs> Refuse. Tell him to screw off. No, don't do that. Um, but yeah, now all that we literally care about is this guy. The Guildmaster. Um, and a couple of the adventurers actually have decent money to start. Um, not charming. She's terrible. <laughs> the wife asked me for some food. Here's a candy apple. Not gonna sell this guy a bag of onions, are ya? Look, it's what we got. Yes, please buy our armor. The, so the good. reason that you so the reason that you refuse those by the way is it's faster to refuse them because it stops them from showing back up in a couple of days to uh, pop another dialogue box in your face asking for the items that you definitely don't have yeah like if you're going to if you have them it can do you know flip them that's great but the realistic game plan tell them all no is anything red? Okay, now we just... Oh, uh, yeah, this is actually really bad. <laughs> this is kind of bad times right now. Weapons going down is pretty much the worst thing for us. So now we have to just force time forward. Yeah, and hope that in the next two days... We managed to get enough money. Basically, I'm just resetting time and hoping to get another one of those banners for pricing. Yeah, which we just got, but it didn't do what we wanted it to do. Yeah, there will always be one at the start of a new day. Yep. Sometimes you'll get a second one, and those can be very helpful. Or harmful. So we have to take two days off. This is very bad. Yeah. I think this run is pretty dead. Yeah, this run may die here, honestly. Yep, run's dead. Yeah, because when the items are lower priced, you just cannot make enough money here. You can show people what happens when the run dies, though. Oh, yeah. 
You should do that. Oh, yeah. So, we write our check for everything we've got. Which is not enough. Not enough. 30, because we need 30k. This is why you become a high-end weapon shop, by the way, because you need to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. <gasps> Avoid. Failure. <laughs> Tears like, yo, 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 you're broke. And now I need to tell you that I'm going to take your house because I am a terrible fairy who is terrible. And this world of fairies is really bad. This is like, these are the worst fairies. Cat food and cardboard box, everybody. Terrible. This game is awful. <laughs> Why did it have to end in a box? Capitalism crushed. <laughs> Capitalism crushed reset. It's unfortunate. Yeah, so, it was all a nightmare. Now we started again on day two uh, with my inventory and my merchant level. And 40 minutes on the timer, so I'm resetting. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's basically how 90% of these runs go. You get a little bad luck at some point in time and the game just decides that you're not allowed to finish. Yeah, just like real-life capitalism. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> well, bad news, we're broke. Yeah, well, three, two, one. Try yeah. again. Yeah. I'm sure there's backup, like, actual safe strats one could co come up with. I don't know where they are. And honestly, I think it's way more interesting that this game is as, you know, just much of an RNG nightmare as it is. It's a long RNG nightmare, too. Like, it's not like a 20-minute RNG nightmare or something. It's a 90-minute RNG nightmare. Yeah. Why do we speedrun Final Fantasy 1 again? Chat has it correct because we like to suffer. Nikki is just like, and Nikki is just like, who would ever run such a terrible game with so much RNG? I don't know, Nikki. Who would? Who would? And of course, Rhea's asking if I run any games that aren't RNG nightmares, and the answer is no. Yeah, am I the one who runs the games that aren't really RNG nightmares, but just RNG adjustment games? Like, Odin Sphere is not an RNG nightmare, it's just if the RNG is good, I can do some really spectacular things. I mean, if you want to talk about RNG nightmares, uh, let's talk about how uh, the Legends Arceus speedrun is shaping up. I mean, we knew that that was going to be a mess, like... <laughs> oh yeah. It's gonna be a glorious mess. Uh, old man wants to buy your knife, by the way, so we're off to a flying start here, because he's an old man who is just going to be terrible and not take your first offer. I still need to take the one Odin Sphere record I don't have. I have all the ones that matter. I'm not gonna do all- I'm not gonna do all books I love my hands. I can't sit and do a six-hour speedrun anymore. Uh, but I'm not doing any of the normal runs, because those are grindy and silly. They're not for me. And I haven't speedrun Odin's here in a hot minute, anyway. Bombo, armband, cloth hat, warrior's helm. But yeah, like, the early game, you know, up until day 11 is... Well, okay, the early game through day 4 is scripted in terms of what, what shopping you do. Which is nice. You pick, you know, a set of items that are going to offer a reasonable amount of money to get you started. When you sell them at the appropriate markups. 
You gotta make that money. But yeah, there's level two and my starting capital. But yeah, there, there's also, like, even if this game's route was guaranteed to finish, there's still a bunch of RNG over um, things like... Uh, one sec. Um, things like, oh, how many people decide to go shopping today? Why, can I, why can't I buy uh, four apples this time around? This sucks. Yeah. I'll buy an extra candy. Sometimes things are terrible. And also, you know, sometimes you get into situations where, you know, you open the shop with a full inventory, and people are just like, nah. People are just like, can you sell me this? Or can you buy this from me? Can you buy this from me? Can you buy this from me? Well, the and worst bringing... are when you, when you open the store and you don't get any transactions at all. And if, and if it just shows up, wander, mills around, and leaves. Oh, like, it's a Best Buy in uh, 2012. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I worked retail. I know what's up. I know why you're here. You're here to price things out so you can buy them on Amazon. <laughs> You can tell me it's fine. I'm on your side, let's be real. <laughs> Best Buy doesn't pay my checks anymore. I worked back to school at Target. That was a time. That sounds like a trip, honestly. Like, not a good one either. Um. All points from that for guessing that man's magic number. Did you really? Yeah. Did you did you determine what this man's magic number for chocolate was and it was exactly 300? No, not this guy. It was a different guy. Who knows? But yeah, no, I went out of my way to ensure that my all of my shifts were as off hours as possible. Uh, yeah, when I worked for Best Buy during Black Friday, I only worked openings. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, they still put me on for, like, midnight shifts on occasion. It was really a nuisance, and I hated it. But, you know, it's the life you live, I guess. Yeah, there was one time at Target where I worked. Frick. Uh, <laughs> right. Sounds... I worked Frick. <laughs> I... Well, I mean, I worked 1 to 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fair. I get that. And apologies for the steam overlay, I forgot to turn that off. The realization is, is that my steam my steam overlay is forever turned off because I did one GDQ run uh, for frame fatales for uh, for uh, a game that's on my PC, which is to state I did Hades once, and they require that you turn off your steam overlay because people get steam overlay bombed there uh, on the rank. <laughs> yeah. So Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel requires you to have your steam overlay working in order to buy anything with real money. So. Uh, not only did I turn it back on, I turned it on for a terrible reason. I mean, you're allowed to make your decisions, love. It's fine. Yes, but I can also make sure I call out the fact that my decisions are bad. That's fair. 
I really like Master Duel. It, it plays really well. I don't have a lot of opinions about the format and metagame. Uh, that is my fiance's forte. Have you have you considered the power of joy, joyous Nash here? Um, like this is the format before a couple of a couple of very important cards were banned out apparently. <laughs> yeah, can I interest you in Maxi and Maxi uh, accessories? Um. Maxi got so bad. Maxi got so bad in the in the meta that people were trying to build decks that just made somebody deck out if they played Maxi. Um, doesn't usually work annoyingly enough because there's not enough real direct milieu opponent cards apparently that are consistent. But you know, people tried. Oh yeah. For those who don't know, Maxi is a card that literally says discard this from your hand until the end of your turn, or until the end of this turn, every time your opponent special summons, you draw a card. Special yep. summons, of course, are the the backbone of the game by a wide margin nowadays. Um, but the whole idea is that you can draw a pile of cards and get what you need to win the game. Uh, but if you draw for an empty deck, you lose. So, you know. Uh, no, it's more like Magic is slowly becoming more like Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, if you've played Legacy Magic, it's basically, you know, a game where you break all the rules and such, but yeah. Yeah. Except in, except in Legacy, they occasionally ban the wrong card. Oh no. Uh, no. I, I disagree with that, Nikki. Duels do not take five minutes per turn. Fast duels take five minutes per turn in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a reminder that much like in Magic, alternate casting costs are bad and scary for the game. Um... But I mean, that's been a tradition in Yu-Gi-Oh! that alternate casting costs are bad and scary and bad for the game has been a tradition throughout the entire game history. Um, Magic, Magic the Gathering's um, development team in particular I'm gonna call them out in particular because every so often they think that they can, uh, they feel like they can, uh, change a way that, um, what's it called, that costs are handled. Like, for example, you know, they create something that lets you untap lands when you cast spells. That's not gonna be broken, right? Um, those cards, like, six of them have been banned throughout Magic history. Um, right? Uh, the ability to cast spells without paying mana, but you can pay life instead. Um... That can't be Correct, broken, right? is a known balance mechanic. What are you talking about? Right, yeah, two life is fair for one mana, right? Um, Birthing Pod, of course, broke two formats um, and is banned still in Up Deep is Legacy. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, what else is there? Pitch cards? Pitch cards weren't very broken, right? Like, pitch cards are fair. It costs you an extra card to counter a spell. How, ba how, ba how bad is that? That's going to be real bad, right? Uh, Force of Will has been defining formats uh, since it came out in 1996. <laughs> um, and uh, both Contagion and Pyrotechnics were both very playable in multiple formats for quite some time. Uh, Fire Blast as well, which was Sacrifice Mountains. Like, losing mana permanently is bad, right? Um, basically, Yu-Gi-Oh! is alternate casting costs the game, and that started basically with, what, Dark Arm Dragon? Might have even started before that with, what, uh, the one soldier that was, uh, sacrifice a light, or remove a light and dark creature from your graveyard. Yeah, I'm gonna banish a light and a dark. Yeah, and then win the game. <laughs> and then the game just ends. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Chaos light. Emperor Dragon. Yeah, thank you. Dark Arm Dragon, also very, very good. Chaos Emperor Dragon, obviously, is hella banned. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! made some decisions because, of course, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! made decisions because nothing has a casting cost, so, you know, there's no real balancing effect other than what you sacrifice, and so, you know, having ways to freely set up your sacrifices so that you can hit all your alternate casting costs consistently is really bad. 
Yeah. But like, no matter what... No matter what limitations Yu-Gi-Oh! has put on cards that uh, get around the tributing mechanic. Like, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! started off with just, I am going to turn my dude sideways um, and, you know, not play any cards I have to tribute for because, like, things died of removal. Yeah, you get two for one. Yeah. And if you invest resources in it, uh, it's still gonna die to removal. And yet, and yet, the first true boss monster in Yu-Gi-Oh was uh, what uh, Skull Servant. <laughs> you know, and then Jinzo shortly thereafter. Both of them required yeah. only one sacrifice. Yeah, Jin yeah, Jinzo was like the first one that really took off as like a thing worth sacrificing for because it turned off a third of the cards in the game. Yeah, it turned off... It, and not only did it turn off a third of the cards in the game, it turned off um, a half of the common removal in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, like that was the thing, is, is that you can do... you get to do exciting things because it, you know, turns off removal, and that's really good. Yeah, there's a reason Yu-Gi-Oh's ban list is a frickin' mile long. I know, it's funny that you mention RBW that every type of new summoning is broken because now in the meta, uh, Pendulum summoning is actually really bad? Mm -hmm. Like, it, in a very specific sort of way, which I find really intriguing. It's mostly because Pendulum Summoning gets hit by every type of removal um, in the game, basically. <laughs> because you are dependent upon having at least four cards, basically, to get value from it. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <sighs> The other side of Pend Summoning is that it, when they do get hit with removal, they go to the extra deck instead of the graveyard and can be resummoned out as long as you keep the back row up. Yep. So yeah, you have to attack the back row, but every deck is attacking the back row. Like, that's normal. Yeah. But they do have some inherent protection. Yep. And Pendulum monsters that are Pendulum spells as well do give you some nice effects at points, but they're just not powerful enough in a world of uh, in a world of Link One monsters that just do broken things and Link Two monsters that just do broken things. Yeah, like on Master Duel, I'm uh, running a uh, Live Twin deck, um, which just has a effect, uh, which basically is just. An archetype that goes, yo, I set up for making a like four in your turn. Yep, and you loop your also, link twos back. Also, there's VTubers. Yep, and you can link your 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 uh you can link your link twos back and forth so that you can draw cards and blow up monsters. So as long as things aren't immune to removal, then they will just start exploding at random, basically. Oh, it's better than that. You can blow up anything. Yeah. Right, in exchange, your numbers are a little bit smaller until you drop that Link 4 monster, so your deck is vulnerable to just getting attacked. But since duels don't lack long, last long enough for that to be a concern... Yeah, the other thing you have to worry about is, like, Nibiru. I mean, Nibiru, everyone worries about Nibiru. That's why everybody plays it. <laughs> Some decks can get under the five special summon wall. Yu-Gi-Oh! is inherently a broken game, and that's just the nature of the thing. Like, there's no getting around that. <sighs> that said, Legacy, they did just ban Ragavan and Legacy because, you know... You know, because they finally printed a card that made blue bad, but then you played it with blue and it made blue good again. <laughs> GG, I guess. <laughs> you know. 
I mean, that's just magic history. <laughs> this card this card was aimed to make blue bad, but instead you just play it in blue decks, it makes blue better. What the hell? Okay. What does Master Duel have a legacy move? Uh, I mean, Master Duel should... only has the one format at the moment. Um, Standard. Which, you know, honestly, isn't that bad of a format? Like, what's interesting about it is it's different than either the Western or Eastern paper formats. Mm -hmm. Which are also both different. Like, in Japan, they have a different ban list than they do over here in the States. And again, like, a lot of the key cards that, um, that have already been banned in paper on both sides of the ocean are still available to be played in three copies in Master Duel. So enjoy getting hand-trapped, I guess. I mean, Maxi is still a three in Japan. Is it really? Yeah. I guess, I guess, that's, that's always, we that's weird to think about, because that's a lot of, that's basically time walk, like, like, unless your opponent wants to, like, say, here, you can draw enough of your deck, but I think I can kill you this turn. Like, in a format where you get three joyous as well, like, letting me draw a bunch of cards is bad, because then I'm going to have the hand trap to finish off whatever you're doing, and then just win the game on my turn. Well, but remember that. Uh, Ash Blossom is only once per turn. Yeah, but even so, you just need to you just need to know what the right one thing to stop is, and then everything explodes. Imagine knowing what your opponent's deck does. <laughs> imagine, knowing, imagine knowing the metagame, like important card game skills, I guess. Yeah. It's why it's why people play. I, I'm gonna say this, and it's gonna sound terrible. It's why people play mono red because you just go under the metagame. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, nothing wrong with uh, just turn my turn my men sideways and swing. I mean, look, we we had we had an entire year of believe in the cleave. Yeah, except in except in white and green, except in white and green, you sadly don't get lightning bolt. <laughs> You don't get you don't get red red. Your creature that was doing three damage now does eight. <laughs> yeah, if you play mono red, mono red is the meta game. Uh, weapons on twelve. Look, I'm gonna just talk about I'm gonna talk about something that's been part of Magic Theory for 20 years now, which is the concept of reach. Um, white and green, while it's a great deck a lot of the time, it lacks for reach. So if your opponent has some way of blocking forever, which admittedly is less of a problem in standard these days, um, infinite recursive creatures are a thing that they know is kind of bad. Regeneration is not a thing anymore. Uh, indestructible creatures are all super expensive in non aggro decks. Um, and even then, a lot of cards say exile now, so there's always counterplay. Um, the idea is that white and green don't have, like, haste creatures that let you win out of nowhere. Like, your opponent is going to see your Thrag Tusk on the board sitting there waiting to swing, right? Um, as opposed to red, where it's just like, all of a sudden, oh, look at all these shocks that just fell out of my hand. <laughs> you want to counter my creature? Oh god, I shock you four times and you die. <laughs> So yeah, the concept of reach is interesting, because in white-green you will win by inevitability, but you're always just one Wrath of God effect away from having literally nothing. And then needing a turn to pick up, which means your opponent gets two draws to, to uh, stop you from doing what you're doing. You can kind of see where this is going. How is this run going, by the way? I've I ceased paying attention and been talking about collectible card games for like half an hour now. It's a little sketchy, but like not bad. Oh, we're not gonna hit level 11 in a timely fashion, are we? Frick, I needed one more. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'll be right back. Hey, 
two more items. <sighs> but yeah, just a lot of menuing, a lot of hitting those percentiles. And a lot of gentle price gouging. <laughs> I will take you up on that, maybe. Bye bye, aggressively overpriced food. Let's go. It's not just about money, it's about having enough people in one uh, opening of the store that you can actually make enough uh, points to level up. I don't actually play it, I'd like to. I think that combo kills me. That combo break kills me. Sim hasn't done anything different in terms of its actual stuff. It's more moderation questions. And missteps is what I will say on the matter. But you know, Hot Take the Global Chat was a terrible idea to begin with, I know.
いくらにしようかなうんありがとうございましたくれたよいらっしゃいませ Every global chat in a game is super toxic. That is just like a universal fact. Yes! Unless. The problem is, no company is willing to moderate their global chats enough to the point where they're actually good. Like, if, if there was a game that had a actually well-moderated global chat, I wouldn't have this opinion. So the game is intended to be played as like a time loop. So you will have a better chance of doing it uh, by virtue of, you know, doing the time loop. Look, it's just capitalism Dark Souls. You keep failing until you succeed. Unfortunately, the best way to do that is just delete the save file. It's a pain in the patukas, but it is unfortunately uh, the best way. Uh, so you have to do that in the, uh, like, you have to go into your switch menu. Um... DM me and I'll I'll explain the menu again after the run. Mm. 
Did you really call this the Dark Souls of Capitalism? I mean, to be fair, capitalism is the Dark Souls of Capitalism. <sighs> yeah, but at least in Dark Souls you can win eventually. You can technically win eventually in this. But not in real capitalism. Correct. Because real capitalism is bad, actually. Also, I don't think I got the friendship I need. Oh, that's bad too. So this run's just going to go into heck in a handbasket, huh? Yep. It took me till day 12 to hit level 11. Uh, metal items has decreased. Yeah, we're just gonna reset this one now. This is just where your run goes to die, is it? Metal items down, yep. not level 11. Everything's yeah. bad. <sighs> well, you know, this is how this run goes, which is why this is literally the only marathon where I will ever be able to run this game. <laughs> I'm going to take five, get myself some more water, take a quick stretch break, and then we'll, we will be right back to this. So enjoy the cute cutscene if you missed it earlier.
ぞ願いを叶えるために待ってるよ。あおう、I am back. Oh, we're getting to see more of the great combat in this game, huh? Yeah. But yeah, there's a reason I gave a three hour estimate. It's so that, you know, <laughs> we can throw ourselves against the perils of capitalism a couple of times. And, like, you know, this is. The rate that I, this is what I expected from this run. You know, like, the fact that when I did this as part of the tribute showcase or、uh, last year, it actually got a run to finish was a goddamn miracle. Yeah. So, like, I'm just happy I can be here, I can show things off. I would like to make it to、uh, the third debt today, but, you know, it's not up to me. Um, as, as we saw, you know, there's a whole lot of RNG under the hood that just makes a rough way to have any sort of reasonable strategy doing this in one cycle.、Um, the real thing that's killer is I've had runs that get off to super good starts, get past. The second checkpoint, the 30k, and look to be going really strong. And then none of the weapons or armor are marked at high price for the rest of the run. The game just looks at me and says,、nah. No. And I mean, that, that's just the run. Like, it's fun. I really enjoy it. You have a weird definition of the word fun. Look, it's cute, and I can't even be mad at myself when runs die. Because it was literally outside of my control. Yeah. Let's get this started. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, I always forget that it's only two cutscenes there. I do deeply appreciate that this game has the cutscene skip. Like, it would be just. Ah. Untenable? Yeah. A nightmare of a run if we couldn't skip past the cutscenes. Well, also, just shout outs to opening the store and literally no one buys the knife. Yeah. That's basically a solid day, too. We're on our way. I'm noticing the F FF14 chat in there, and one of these days I will actually sit down and practice Black Mage until I'm good enough at it. Maybe. Hey, Mom! 
I am just a simple scholar main. Well, scholar slash crafter main, because I too like playing Reseteer in my Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> Doing a capitalism! Swords. Two heads. Two armbands. Four apples. Two candy. Two tayaki. One book. Two treasures. Pirates is still going. Right. It's gotta be in what year 18 now, I think. Money, yes. Be willing to buy your stuff. I think the really weird thing about Puzzle Pirates in particular is that I will always be a part of the history of that game in particular. In so much as that there were players of Puzzle Pirates who, as late as 2018, were still invoking my name, which was weird to see. Chat wants to know what Puzzle Pirates is. Puzzle Pirates is literally a online game where you do puzzles to run pirate ships and islands, um, and how you do it the puzzles is the only measure of your skill. Period. It's pretty wild. What did I do in Puzzle Pirates? I was... I was, for about a year-long stretch, the number one performer at a very specific puzzle in the game. Um, like, I had won three of the major competitions that had occurred back in, like, 2005. <laughs> oh, sailing. I was also probably one of the top 10 sword fighters in the game as well for quite some time, but never really broke through. Dang it. I'm obviously not as good as it is I used to be. That was when I was 25 and now I'm 41, but you know, it's I guess. I broke my combo. I'm oh, mad. No. But yeah, I think if I if I were able to remember what my old Puzzle Pirates login is, um, I still have access to my inn on one of the islands. I started playing Puzzle Pirates in 04. I think it was an alpha in 03, I want to say. What 
こうかな。えい、ー、どれにしようかな。何をこうかな。何をこうかな。行ってきます。そうや。お疲れでーす。お疲れです。お疲れ様でした。love to lose money。今日も頑張りましたね。明日もこの通りで行きましょう。仕事しますよ。今日も頑張っていこう。行ってきまーす。ただいま。どれにしようかな。何がいいかな。ええー。何をかけな。何がいいかな。ええー。どうしようかな。お店開けますよ。いらっしゃいませ。いくらにしようかな。<笑>
るかなえい、ー、何を起こすの、えー、どうしようかな拝ですいらっしゃいませいくらにしようかな We are likely to hit the first threshold, money wise at least. Yeah, comfortably, it looks like too. Well, maybe not comfortably, but you know. I'm not worried about it at least. Yeah. Also, yeah, you do have incredible amounts of charming powers. This is back when I was like 24, though, or 25. They were latent. <laughs> I guess. Have you considered that you're, you've always been charming and you only just needed the ability to let it out? No. Ah. No, I don't. I'm not that charming. I don't know what you're talking about. I am certainly not going to talk about on air the ability to charm your pants off. <laughs> wow, okay. So nobody knows that I can do that, by the way. I would be really clear about that. Right, no one knows. It is completely unknown. Right. Right, completely inaccurate. Total fabrication. Never done it before. <laughs> What were we talking about again? Um, the fact that you're pretty. Wow. <laughs> now you're just calling me pretty. Why are you doing this to me? It's so unfair. I'm blushing now. You can't do this to me like that. I'm doing it because you're pretty. Look, if I have to fight my way through the horrors of capitalism, I'm at least going to flirt with you while I can do it. <laughs> when I re when I recover my when I recover my call, I'll be back. <laughs> Do I have some food? My guy. My dude. My man. My friend. Hey, welcome back. Uh, I can't believe we're flirting with each other on this channel. At least my leveling's going okay right now. So the funny thing is, is that this particular white mage uh, that I use as one of my two emotes, or as one of my my channel emotes, was not was not created by Scala. It was created by somebody who has the same name as Scala. <laughs> but yes, a very different, a very a very similar at first glance art style, but actually very different. <sighs> Yeah, feel free to drop your link to the tweet, Scala. It came out really good. Yeah, so did I. I mean, you are really good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody associates me with White Mage at this point in time. That's why in Final Fantasy XIV I'm maining Paladin in this expansion. Well, yeah, because... FF14 healing is bad. <laughs> well, it's not bad, it's just not for me. I've been over this many a time, and I'm not gonna go over it again. Yeah. It's got some issues. I am out. Like... <laughs> If it's, stylistically, if it's stylistically for you, it's great, and if it's not... Yeah. 
mostly I want the healers to have slightly more DPS options. Yeah. Like, not even a lot, but just slightly more interesting things to do when you're not healing. Oh, I guess right. I'm a genius. He did it, he made it to level 8. Yeah, no, I'm just really on the razor's edge for having enough uh, money for the first threshold, so I'm in an interesting spot. Yeah. Like, I am desperately thinking about every, like, what to do right now, and I think the answer is just continue forward. Yeah, I think you're fine. As long as you don't have to, like, buy a statue, you're probably okay. <sighs> also, I love this lady's like, I found my husband's secret stash of cherries and I need to get rid of them. The guildmaster has decided it's time to be hateful towards you and sell you a beef bowl at a very inopportune time. Uh, yeah, I'll have food. I'll have food on time. It's not a big deal. Okay, we're fine now. Yep, yeah, now everything's okay again. Just don't drop the combo. We'll just get as close to 10 as we can get here. <laughs> hey lady, why would you sell your husband's cherry? He's just trying to learn how to tie a knot with his tongue. I'm just gonna go until they throw me off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> As like one of the main people here with the authority to do so. <laughs> also, I do love how it's just explicitly an Amazon box. It really is. It's got the upside down smiley face and everything. 
Like, they're not trying to be subtle. And I appreciate that. Subtlety's for cowards. No, nah, Nikki. No, Nikki. Like, you would not let me go. I'm aware of this fact. Hey, you're stuck here for another hour. Am I really? I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV on the other monitor, so it's fine. <laughs> wow, I can't believe you are you aren't giving this game 100% of your concentration 100% of the time. Stella, I spent half an hour talking about the metagame for a card game I don't even play. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Kind of housewife makes a good point. It is an Amazon box and the fairy is named Prime after all. It's like... Oh dang it, I missed that part of it too. I appreciate you all want to sell me things. But I gotta make some money, honey. Damn it! <sighs> this kills the combo. Well, I sold out on hats earlier anyway. Yeah. Uh, merchant levels unlock new options over the course of the game. Um, and in particular, hitting merchant level 11 gives you access to the fourth tier of goods in the shop. Which basically uh, are hard required for the speed run in order to just go off. But yeah, merchant level basically unlocks all the features as you go. Which is why the game plays as a time loop. Yeah. Unless you're doing the speedrun and trying to do hardcore capitalism percent. Hardcore capitalism percent. Okay, I will hit the threshold tomorrow. But yeah, level 10 unlocks the uh, banner ads. Five things.
And there we go. That's the first instance of using a markup to scam people out of money. We're scamming people. We love it. Probably should have sold for one more day, but this works too. I mean, you made 11. Here, buy this butter knife. Sure. No. Should have grabbed a weapon. So now you can grab no now we're in now we're in weapon town, aren't we? <laughs> You're just looking to sell one item. What everybody else does is irrelevant. Want to sell this shield before its price drops? Yep. Uh, weapons on 13. <sighs> You'll assuredly have weapons. I really wanted that shield to sell. Can I get the sword to sell? Yeah, this is how runs die. Got his brick. What? Yeah, this one's dead. What happened? I didn't get the the dude leveled up, so he didn't have the cash to pay for the big sword. Ah. Oh, that's bad. <sighs> like, 
like if I had been smart and been paying attention to it, I would have had I could have bought some of the tier three swords and sold those. Yeah, but I was not smart or paying attention. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of it is maybe transitioning from tier 3 to tier 4 weapons in a little bit more of a smooth manner, but yeah. Well, if you get the friendship upgrade, you yeah, can go straight into tier 4 just fine. But you didn't, so. Yeah. Such is life. Rip, I guess. Rip. We've got time for one more run. Um, And if this dies in 30 minutes, well, then I'll figure out how to fill... The remaining 30, unless our uh, other runner is one, is ready to go early. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll play it by ear. Yeah. Natara is telling me to fight the slime. Which I could figure out how to go do. I mean, I got this. The question is whether or not the game's got me. I mean, that's the dream. Okay, I need that dagger to sell. I need that dagger to sell. Thank you. I think there's a version of the speedrun where you add 30 minutes to the overall time, but you just try and focus on getting level 11 for the first loop. Um, and then do the debt repaying on the second one. But even then, you're still at the whim of RNG saying, uh, you know, you're allowed to sell things. It gives you like a 30,000 head start, not necessarily like a $300,000 head start, which is really important. Yeah. Like, I forget what all transfers over between loops, but if friendship transfers over, you know, you could use the first loop just to get level 11 like you do with everything else. And then you loop back with um, a bunch of good stuff at A15. And just call it a, just call it at that point. But it would be ha it'd have to be something that I'd have to spend the time uh, grinding out. Okay, apparently rep does transfer. So that's good at least. Okay, there's my money. Two worn swords. Two hats. Two arm bends. Hey, what do you 
I mean, you have to balance going for near pins with making money. And also just menu time. Let's go get a hat. And I need four apples. Apples. Apple. Ah, I am out of apples. experience Let's open again so I'm still a little behind on XP Level four. Level up. On our way. Yeah. We need five items tomorrow. Apples. 
らっしゃいませいくらにしようかなありがとうございました買ったよこんにちはあのねいくらにしようかなうんありがとうございました買ったよいらっしゃいませいくらにしようかな This is going as, as expected. Yep. Which is to state that you're sketching it out all the way up until just short of the second checkpoint, and then the game just decides to not buy, to let you sell something that would actually get you through the run. Yep. Yeah, no, that's what happens when、uh, you get a nice big combo going, is you get the experience points. Which is what you need. But hopefully, not stealing. Well, maybe. I mean, look. We can r e t r i e the piece if we want. Also, shout outs to her deceased grandfather's beloved loaf of walnut bread. Is that like fruitcake at this point? It's seven and a half years old and ostensibly still edible? I suppose. Well, it's going on the shelf. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Whatever, someone will buy it. Paperweight. <laughs> This is the freshest bread I own. The sell by date is three years ago. Don't worry, Don't worry about, about it. it. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be fine. Ain't, ain't got nothing to worry about. Ain't nothing bad ever happened with this bread. <laughs> God damn it. We get two beef bowls to flip. And you make the money. I do appreciate that Chad is statting out the bread. Look, the bread is the most compelling character in this story so far. Which is saying something it's a loaf of bread. Okay, we are now ahead on XP, which is nice.
いらっしゃいませいくらにしようかなありがとうございました買ったよいらっしゃいませこれなんかどうでしょういくらにしようかなありがとうございました売れたよ、oh, no. いらっしゃいませあのねいくらにしようかな I just got sold a thankful statue. <laughs> oh, right on time. There's a bit of a delay. I'm not watching this live, but you know, those words alone make me make me want to cry. Yeah, thankful statues are the worst part of this early game. Because, you know, if you, you can either drop your combo. Or spend half your money. Yeah. And the other thing, of course, is that people aren't willing to buy them because they're a high enough tier item that they're too expensive for most folk. Correct. Even if they're specifically looking for statuary, they're still too expensive. Okay, we're back at the green. See, like an old beef bowl, though, I wouldn't. I wouldn't question so much considering that there exist soups in this world that have been using the same stock base for like decades. So like so like ancient ancient beef bowl doesn't scare me in the slightest. In fact it sounds extra delicious. It's just aged. It's fine. Nothing can go wrong. Yeah, it's like loot fisk. Oh, good old delicious loot fisk, baby. You can smell the ammonia already. I'm pretty sure that there's no restaurant in the area that sells loot fist glove, but we're not going to find out. Yes, I would very much prefer not to find out. Like, I already don't like things that are a little too pickled. Loot fisk is less pickled and more gross. I also don't like things that are gross. <laughs> the only reason I know about Loot Fisk is because of the Dungeons of Dreadmore. I mean, yeah, that's how most people know it. I mean, <laughs> what? Well. I had to haggle, but we got there. Did we survive? Yes. Is the run alive? Yep. So yeah, so one of the things that Scandinavia, that the Scandinavian nation seems to be known for, is uh, interesting preparations of fish. Which is to state all that I can think about right now, sadly, is Tina talking about source scrolling on her streams. I could have hats on time. I'll just buy extra hats. Thank you. 
All right, not only are we not dead, we're going to have enough of a... Oh, god damn. There goes the combo. We were going to have enough of a buffer. Well, we're going to have enough of a cash buffer. Wait, you can buy loot fisk? I mean, oh, you that makes sense given not going to say where you live, but given where you live. Solve the walnut bread because yeah. the other thing that happens with thankful statues is like someone will come up to you when you've got no cash on hand and say buy this and your response is no <laughs> well your response is yeah i'll buy it but you're gonna have to sell it to me for way less money than you would ever imagine making hmm. no mostly my response is to just start crying but you know I mean, look, 80% of your runs die at this point. What do you want? <laughs> What's that? Can't believe Faye is being, you know, a fairy. I have four of these cursed things. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure everything's gonna be okay. Nothing, ro nothing can go wrong from you having four cursed statues in your inventory. Just put them in the front window. I'm sure somebody will buy them. <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> I am very fair. You are very fair. Yeah, you're very fair in the same way that symmetrical effects in card games are fair. Look, destroy all creatures for four is just fine. I don't know what you're talking about.
お疲れ様でした今日も頑張りましたね明日もこの調子でいきましょう Exactly. Just, just put them in the window. I mean, come on, someone will buy them. Sadly, I cannot sell you the good treasure because you're broke. I thought I got a level on him, so I was hoping that would work. I have to open up one more session after this because I dropped that combo. There we go. 
こんにちはいくらにしようかなありがとうございました売れたよ Weapons on 12. That's going to be important. We are doing good. We are right on pace. Yeah, we hit level 11 on day 10, which is great. You know what that means? It means that we can buy new weapons. No dice on the first go. Dice on. Turn to day two. Nothing. Like, I only care about stuff that is marked up. If there's literally anything I could do about any of this, I would. Okay, here we go. Cursed statues off my hands. Indeed. Okay, let's make money. Let's do a capitalism. <laughs> We are now on. He's just like, I came by and you weren't there. What happened? We're now a high end weapon store.、Uh, they are considered precious items.、Uh, not metal. So, like, gold and silver are different than,、uh, you know, things made out of steel. It's two different distinct categories. Why do we not have a hat? I mean, literally, we just need to make a sale today of any of these big ticket items, and we're probably fine. It's just getting someone to actually pick one up.、Buy. They need to buy all of the big ticket items for this run to continue, though, it looks like, because it's day 14. <laughs> Please, Guildmaster, buy my swords. Okay, they're still high priced. So we're still, there's still a chance. <sighs> I 
たよいらっしゃいませじゃお店開けますよいらっしゃいませあのねごめんなさいへぇ、hey, yeah. things are not looking up at this point correct いらっしゃいませごめんなさい怒らせちゃった uh, okay. I literally own three things this armor, this steel sword, and this knife. Well, we survive. You, you can certainly buy this knife from me. Please take this gigantic knife. We live to capitalism another day. Hey, we made it past the second threshold, which is important. And also, I s you obviously have to split on the paid stamp coming down. Obviously, that's just correct. Oh, yeah, so far, so good, I guess. Oh, trust me, I have a lot of love for her outside of the context of the speedrun. Weapons on 18. Someone to buy something. And no one bought anything while weapons were expensive, so now I'm uh sweating it. Dead in the water. Yeah, this is this is how this game works. Yeah, you try real hard, and then all of a sudden the RNG decides to say that the run is over. Yep. But if the RNG goes really, really well, you can just pass time, and it's great. Anything up right now? No.
guess we Oh yeah! Go. The game does save. Like every time you see that disc in the. Oh, that's a loading. Yeah. But yeah, you can save the game. I just. speedrun, so. Saving is not useful. <laughs> Okay, everything's back to normal. That's not good, though. Correct. Especially because, um, I need 80k by the end of the current day. Yeah. Yeah, we're broke as hell. Weapons. Rip run, I guess. Yeah. But hey, you know, th there's a reason this game is here and only here. It's because, holy heck, this is the sing this isn't the most RNG heavy run I've had to do, but it is the single most unsafe run I've ever had to that I've ever ran. Like there isn't a lot of RNG, but it hits like a truck. I mean, the fact that you finished a run on a recording once still amazes the hell out of me. Yeah. I mean. Well, you know where I attribute that. Yes. It's the most RNG heavy run I've ever had to do. With that definition, it's probably either Chain of Memories or Dungeon Dice Monsters. Dungeon Dice Monsters. Three hundred. Are you sure the three twenty nine won't cover eighty k? Are you certain? Yeah. But that was Reseteer and my attempts to beat the game. <sighs> this game is silly. I do appreciate it, but it is silly. It's a fun game. Yeah. Um, and with that, let me see something right quick. Cool. I think we're going to uh, wander on over and start getting set up for the next run, uh, which I believe is Reyna in chat doing SMRPG Rando. Uh, and also, uh, I have an announcement to make. Um, Hi, Must Be Tuesday. Hello, I'm Must Be Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here to let everyone know that Educase Collective is going to put on our second game jam. Uh, the first one was in 2020. It was called the Glitches Are Queer Game Jam. This one, I don't know if it's just going to be Glitches Are Queer 2 or something else, but uh, we're going to give more time this time for people to put together their games uh, or their levels or whatever they would like to make. So we're going to do uh, planning throughout the month of March and people can pick their tools that they're going to use, decide what kind of game they want to make, um, learn how to code if that's a thing that you have to do, and then we're going to have two months for actually developing our games. So April and May. Uh, and it should be a lot of fun. So I'm just going to put a link 
in the chat to our Discord. Um, if you want to take part in our game jam and find out info about it and stuff, then uh, you can join the Discord and chat about uh, all of the game development stuff in there. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it because it was a lot of fun last time and people made some really creative stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, join our Discord and check out um, our, our game jam. We can do planning all through March. I uh, apologize for ty typing, but I'm tweeting this out right now. <laughs> oh, <sweet>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thanks, everyone. And uh, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing you all uh, for the next run by Reina. <laughs>